All right, folks, welcome back to Strategy Sunday. Today, I'm not going to cover a map. Today, I'm actually going to show you a replay that I had on the map straight that we covered last Sunday. The team does exactly what I advised them to do. Last Sunday, I said where I advised DD should go, where I think a CV should park him, what battleships to do, where battleships should avoid going. My team followed that advice to a T. The enemy team did exactly what I sort of advised not to do. And I'll let you show how the game plays out. Um, and I really hope this is helpful. So when when I say position there, don't go there. I do it for a reason. I played this game for the last five years. I might not be a super unicum for Kraken, but who cares? You know, the basics of the game is there to know. And it works. It uh, just works. So I really hope you enjoy this uh, uh, playthrough and explanation of why we did this. And uh, I hope you learned something. Take care, everybody. Tell somebody you love them. Cheers. Hey, everyone. So last week in Strategy Sunday, we covered straight. Fairly simple map. Now today, instead of doing a map, I want to actually show you how the recommendations that we spoke about last week got implemented and how it's fairly easy to actually win at this map. Now we're in a standard 4 to 6 match. I'm in my Julius Cesar. One of the funnest tier 5 battleships at the moment. It's been removed. You can't get it anymore except from Christmas containers. Very much like the original Belfast, Musashi, Missouri, etc. So you'll see on this side there's an Igel uh, De Crasse, uh, New Mexico, and myself, and then on the south side of the map, our aircraft mar carrier. <coughs> oh, excuse me, wouldn't be a voiceover if I didn't have to suddenly cough. So, south side, Grimayashi, a couple of battleships, including in New Mexico, our CV, um, and a couple of cruisers. I see a furry taco there, Dunkirk. Now remember what I said about the um, destroyer play. Destroyer play goes sort of CD line and you'll see how Igel is doing exactly that. The De Grasse is following him. De Grasse is going to D line, wants to get that island in D7, D, uh, D7, E7 on his left side, side to protect him. Our carrier is a Furious and that Furious is going to park itself exactly where I recommend it. A carrier go and park itself. Looks like our New Mexico is either struggling to load in or loaded in a little bit late. Now remember what I said about going wide on the sort of J line. Look at where our Grimiyashi is going and our furry taco. I'm going wide here again as I recommended. Uh, and there is a Nuremberg in front of me. The enemy team, to an extent, is following the advice the North Squad is. They're coming out here. <coughs> There's Nuremberg and New Mexico. Yeah, I can't quite, quite see what that one is. I think it's Congo. I should have made my mini map a little bit bigger. And there we go. Citadel on the Nuremberg. He's instantly regretting it. Now you'll see I turn out, and you're going to ask me why are you turning out when you should be going in. This is because of the angling dynamics within the game. And once I get the actual uh, electronic sketch pad that I ordered, um, should be here fairly soon from Amazon. And no, it has shipped out of the States. It'll probably get laid up in customs for a bit. I will explain about angling mechanics. So I'm slowing down completely. I'm keeping at an angle. Look at our New Mexico in G8. Literally doing exactly what was said. Go skirt along those islands. Our DDs are going on the outside. Our battleships are not going there. <coughs> the enemy's battleships are making the mistake of going down J and I lines. And we will see this game develop and how that works out for them. Now... See, I'm actually reversing. This allows me to suddenly accelerate away if I am being focused by the enemy fleet. 
And we'll discover this, so we will discuss, not discover, we'll discuss and discover some of the tactics that you can use in the future Strategy Sunday videos. So exactly what our team is doing there. The New Mexico is stopping the South team from going through to the middle area. And the two the destroyers, the last time they were seen, they were heading to the INJ lines to start herding their red enemy team in and around their camp. This Koenig is trying to sort of hide out there, but he's not angling correctly. The New Mexico, New Mexico is doing a bit of a push. And we see our Furious sink a Congo already. And you notice there I've got the broadside of the Koenig there. A fairly great Sigma on the Julio Cesar. Unfortunately, RNG lets me down and I don't get a decent hit. Now, I notice I'm being targeted by two, uh, two players. So, it is something to keep in mind. Look at that Igel. He is staying exactly on the CD line where, it was, where we recommended he does. And he is torping the New Mexico. Looks like the New Mexico 8-1. And there's another 7,500 damage off the New Mexico. Look, on the J5, J6 area, both our destroyers are exactly there. And they're already chasing that West Virginia. The enemy team being pincered by the New Mexico, what looks like a Furutaco, etc. are now all kind of herding in their area. This Nuremberg, with not much space to go, is now heading towards the islands. I think it's a little bit late for him. The Eigel is coming with me here, or Eigel, however you want to pronounce it. He has done his job. The enemy is now starting to all herd together and flee there. So I accelerate. I don't want to get too close to New Mexico. No fool, his guns can hurt. There's my first kill of the match. Now there's this Koenig that has been indecisively at the back here. But he's turned himself to flee. Um, our Dunkirk takes care of the enemy, Jian Wei. And look at where our Gurmayashi and Gade are. They are hurting that team. And that is exactly, exactly the perfect, perfect destroyer play by our team. So now, what the Aijal and myself is doing is, again, one of the other tactics I discussed. You go kind of wide and you start herding them in. This Aijal, absolute champ, smokes me up here. Our New Mexico seeing what we are doing and that the Grasa is coming to help. But you notice that the Grasa and the New Mexico didn't go all the way to the back and hide. Our Grimiachi kills himself a Emil Barton. And now that he's done his herding, he's starting to move a little bit more inwards. We get some good hits on the Koenig. Unfortunately, the Emil Tons torpedoes gets the Gremiachi. And he gets a flesh wound. But we are one ship down for five ships down on the enemy team. And myself and this Eigel is completely hurting this Koenig, as well as Nuremberg. Now look at where, in F2, where the enemy's CV is. It's exactly where I said he shouldn't be. His planes are taking too long to reach anybody. He doesn't have any support. Our Furious kills the Nuremberg. And we've just got this Koenig that is now fleeing. We've still got a Gade in the south, and he was last spotted in I3. Dunkirk for a Taka, they're going slightly wide now and pushing in. Again, perfect, perfect map, map reading, perfect sense. <coughs> H7 and G7, you've got the Omaha and the New Mexico. And all they're doing there is they're basically blocking the enemy team from pushing. With the enemy team unable to push and unable to get to our CV, our CV is having a fun time. And our CV isn't an idiot. He's parked exactly where where I sit. Um, 
set out in the map where a CV should be parking if he is on that side of the map. In my personal opinion, I think the enemy uh, CV should have been around G1, possibly around D1. He could have much better supported this poor Koenig that he's getting absolutely hammered. I mean, the De Grasse here with me doesn't have the greatest AA. Now, we're about nine minutes in and look at where our eagle is going and remember what i said in the last strategy sunday about straight only towards the middle of the match when the match has started developing it and you can see how it's playing out to you as a dd go and play in the center there doesn't matter if there's a cap or not and this eagle once we've routed pretty much everybody on the north side of the map I mean, myself, the De Grasse and the New Mexico is pushing. Does he go towards the center? Perfect, perfect, perfect play. Dunkirk and Furataka are now going south, pushing up. And unfortunately, we have lost our gate. And we've lost our two DDs on the south. But they, they did what, what they were supposed to at the beginning. Now only is the enemy Vassar moving into a better position. Unfortunately for him, this position is incredibly bad at this time of the map because we are 10 minutes in. And he's getting hammered by myself, by the De Grasse. And look at this De Grasse. This De Grasse is not an idiot up here in the north in B2, B3. And the reason I say it, he's not getting too close. He knows his range, he knows his ship, he knows the shell arcs. So this Congo can easily dev strike him. Sorry, Konik. Congo, my apologies. But he lets me deal with it because number one, I have much tougher armor. Number two, I have much, much more hit points. And he is at a distance wearing down that Vesser. A Furutaka, Furutaka, sorry, I call it the Furutaka, has moved up to G3 already. And whatever little escape could be done is being blocked off by the eagle down there in F5. Again, a perfect, perfect DD play for this map. Um, that's over 10k off the Koenig. Uh, unfortunately, there, Japard burns down a furry taco. Not much he can do. But Dunkirk kills the Vassar. He was in the wrong position. And look at our Furious. Our Furious still hasn't moved there. He could possibly move up maybe to sort of G7. Because this match is pretty much won. And you notice where that eagle killed the Furutaka? That Furutaka was going from F4 into G4. And the eagle stood right by the island ready to ambush him. Now there's in it three enemy ships left. I can't get over the mountain. There's a Japard, the Koenig. And I think the Koenig has run out of... He's run out of map. Not much you can do there. The De Grasse gets the kill before me. And the Japard is now coming to support on this side. With only two ships remaining, our De Grasse is now starting to push up and take a chance. If he gets killed, it's not going to affect the outcome of the match. Our Igel is now going in and going to probably try and torpedo the Queen Elizabeth. This De Grasse kills the Jepard. I think the Jepard might have gotten the tops off there. Yes. But it's too late. We've lost four ships. The enemy literally have one ship remaining. And we are capping their cap circle. I'm not going to do much more here. It's going to take me too long. And it's. And I sit and look at the scenery. That Queen Elizabeth has has 9,000 hit points left. 6,000 hit points left. And this guy types worst team ever. Yes, your team was pretty bad. They didn't watch my videos. The green team, I think they played this map perfectly. Look, for example, this New Mexico. He's an E5. He is still pushing up. He's much slower than I am. But he didn't flee all to one side. And there we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect match. Now let's just see, I didn't do brilliantly, but I did 93,000 damage, uh, did get one um, ship destroyed, 
And with all that spotting and damage, I managed to still be top of the team. So you don't always need to have all the kills, all the damage. Just look at how the map plays out. Use a little bit of thinking. Use a little bit of strategy that some of the players uh, put it out there. And you will have fantastic, fantastic games on this map. Everybody, I really hope you enjoyed this uh, replay sharing of Strategy Sunday. We'll see you tomorrow with a brand new normal video. Have a fantastic uh, Sunday further and take care. Cheers.